A reading from the Book of Sirach. To keep the law is a great oblation, and he who observes the commandments sacrifices a peace offering. In works of charity, one offers fine flour, and when he gives alms, he presents his sacrifice of praise. To refrain from evil pleases the Lord, and to avoid injustice is an atonement. Appear not before the Lord empty handed, for all that you offer is in fulfillment of the precepts. The just one's offering enriches the altar and rises as a sweet odor before the Most High. The just one's sacrifice is most pleasing, nor will it ever be forgotten. In a generous spirit, pay homage to the Lord. Be not sparing of free will gifts. With each contribution, show a cheerful countenance and pay your tithes in a spirit of joy. Give to the Most High as He has given to you, generously, according to your means. For the Lord is one who always repays, and He will give back to you sevenfold. But offer no bribes. These he does not accept. Trust not in sacrifice of the fruits of extortion, for he is a God of justice who knows no favorites. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Gather my faithful ones before me. Those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself is the judge. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Hear, my people, and I will speak. Israel, I will testify against you. God, your God, am I. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. For your burnt offerings are before me always. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Offer to God praise as your sacrifice, and fulfill your vows to the Most High. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me, and to him that goes the right way I will show the salvation of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Peter began to say to Jesus, We have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you. There is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age, houses and brothers and sisters, and mothers and children and lands, with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. But many that are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading comes from Sirach 35, 1-12. And there are two sections in this particular reading. The first one speaks about how observance of the commandments is already a tremendous sacrifice to the Lord. So before bringing sacrifices, make sure that one's heart is pure. Make sure that one tries to do what the Lord wants. The Lord most of all desires obedience, submission to His will, as opposed to trying to bribe Him. And then the second part of this passage talks about the fact that we should, in fact, offer something to the Lord, that we should respond in gratitude to that which the Lord has given us. It's not that we're offering it so that we get what we want. The passage is clear that God doesn't accept bribes. Rather, it's a sense of gratitude. It's a sense of recognition that everything we have is a gift from God, and we owe God praise and gratitude. The Gospel is from Mark 10, 28-31. 
Jesus responds about the reward that we'll receive for following him. It'll be a hundred times that which we've left. Brothers, sisters, mothers, children, lands, but also persecution and eternal life in the age to come. We have to read this reading carefully so as not to fall into the trap that the people of the wealth gospel have fallen into. They speak about the fact that if we follow Jesus, he will make us wealthy. He wants us to enjoy material pleasures. And that's certainly not what is said here. Rather, we will enjoy life so fully that we will no longer possess, but we'll be able to celebrate. We'll be able to enjoy the goodness of all the things around us. I think of St. Francis who vowed poverty and who had nothing, but yet was able to celebrate nature, was able to celebrate food, was able to celebrate fraternity. And that's the attitude that we should have in this life. But in this fullness of life, we will also suffer persecution. That if we follow Christ, we're going to have to carry our cross. Now part of that is internal because part of the cross is our own conversion, giving up some of those things which keep us from totally giving ourselves to God. But part will be external. People will not understand us. They'll make fun of us. They'll take advantage of us. And yet, we have to keep our eyes on the final reward. That since we're living this life so fully, that fullness will continue into eternity. And may God bless us.